AutoCAD 3D. We are short to Elliot Guinness. We are in Chapter 2 still, and this is Lesson 2. We're going to continue with object uh, manipulation commands. And last uh, lesson, we talked about Rotate 3D and Mirror 3D. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about uh, 3D arrays, polar and rectangular ones, and conclude with fillets and chamfers in 3D. Now, uh, let's talk about the environment briefly. We are still in 3D modeling, in the 3D modeling ribbon. We uh, have the same toolbars, essentially, with the addition of a new one. Let me go through that. We have 3D navigation, modeling, and a new one added called solid editing. And, of course, UCS view and visual styles from last time. And, of course, the cascading menus and the uh, command line at the bottom. Okay, I'm also going to change units to architectural and really every design project and lesson will feature architectural units from here on forth. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is 3D array. 3D array is quite similar in principle to the regular 2D one. There is for starters both a rectangular and a polar form, just as in 2D. With the rectangular array, you just add a 3D component, a level to the familiar columns and rows. For the polar array, the one big difference is the two points that define the axis of rotation instead of just one point for the center. Another difference is a curious fact that 3D array is all command line driven. There's no dialog box. So let's go ahead and try out the command, starting with the rectangular array. What we're going to do is going to go into 3D, shaded mode, and create a 2 by 3 rectangle. We're going to extrude it out to 4 inches. Okay. And begin the 3D array command. Now you can either type this in, 3D array, or you can use the cascading menus, modify 3D operations. That's under here. 3D array. There it is. Or you also have toolbar or ribbon. Uh, so we just selected the command. I'm going to select now the object. Hit enter. We are going to do rectangular for R. Number of rows will make that 5. Columns 5. And number of levels, that's the new one, also 5. With the distance between each will be 10. Give it some room to breathe. So 10, 10, and 10. And after a second, your array will appear. Have 125 elements, 5 by 5 by 5. And let me uh, go ahead and uh, orbit this so you can see. And there it is. Now, this result of 125 elements is not going to be used that often, but it's still valuable to know. So, next, we're going to go over the much more useful polar version of this. All right, but uh, in the meantime, pause the video for a moment and go ahead and try this out on your own. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to go on and erase this. Okay, to demonstrate the polar array, we're going to draw an axle with spokes. To create an axle, we're going to draw a circle 5 inches in diameter and extrude it to 36 inches, and then draw a smaller circle uh, and extrude it out into a spoke and then array that. So first of all I'm going to rotate the UCS icon around the x-axis 90 degrees because we want to be in the plane of our circle. And right there, diameter of 5. And we're going to extrude it out to 36. Now it doesn't matter a whole lot but just some numbers to make it more realistic. Then I'm going to return the UCS back to where it was. There it is. And create the spoke by creating a circle. And really, it could be any size. We'll make it about that size. And extrude it out also just about any size is fine. Right there. What we need to do next is position this now from center to the quadrant of 
the axle. Maybe move it back a little bit using ortho. And there it is. I'm also going to go ahead and change the color. And change the color here as well. But that's optional. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the 3D array. Once again, 3D array. Select the spoke. Enter what type of array you'd like to do. We're going to do P for polar. Enter the number of items. We're going to go with, uh, let's say, do 12. And we're going to do a full circle. And yes, we want to rotate the objects as they're arrayed. And specify center point. This is the new and very important key here. We want to go from the center of the axle to the other center of the axle using all snaps. And as soon as you're done, there are the spokes. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try this out on your own. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to go on to the other two commands we want to cover, fillets and chamfering in 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Now recall that the operation of the fillet command with a radius of 0 in 2D AutoCAD. You could use the command to trim two intersecting lines or close a gap between those lines. None of that makes any sense when working with 3D models, which are, by definition, already closed shapes. However, recall also that in 2D we gave fillets radiuses. We use this feature in 3D by adding radiuses or rounded corners on solid objects. So in a way, we now use the original and more correct form of the fillet command, which by definition has always been a rounded corner. Now there are two ways to work on the fillet command in 3D. One way is by using the 2D approach, that is just by typing, toolbar, cascading menu or ribbon and the other is a more dedicated fillet tool available as part of solid editing toolbar which is right up here and that's referred to as dynamic filleting and the exact same thing can be done with chamfer chamfer and fillet are very much related after all where you can type it in or use other methods but it will not be dynamic and you can also use a dynamic version so let's give this a try we're going to create a box that's going to start out as a 12 by 8 rectangle and it's going to be extruded out to 10 inches there it is I'm going to try out the fillet command the original way same as a 2D, I'm going to type in fillet I'm going to select one of the edges and it's going to ask me for a radius, I'm going to put in 2 now it's going to ask me to select additional edges, so I'm going to select two more. As soon as I hit enter, the edges will be created, the fillets rather, will be created. Let's go ahead and try this on your own. Now the dynamic version of this is using fillet edges right here. As soon as I click it, a basic fillet appears but as soon as I hit enter a triangle appears, a, a grip. You can select it when it becomes pink you can drag it as you can see you can dynamically change the size of the fillet though you wouldn't typically be doing this you would uh, even if you're using the dynamic version you'd still put in a value which you can do right now but suppose you did want to do it by eye then you just click hit enter and the radius is now done go ahead and try this on your own alright the dynamic version of uh, chamfer and the regular version of chamfer are once again very much parallel to what we just did so I'm going to type in chamfer select an edge put in a distance too, put in another distance and reconfirm that this is the edge you want hit enter and there it is 
You can always, of course, do more than one edge. And a dynamic version by hitting the uh, icon button. Click, hit enter. And now you notice you'll have two triangles pointing in a direction that you can extend this chamfer. And you can dynamically extend it. When you're done, click or go this way. And when you're done, click. And you can, of course, put in the value as well, which is more realistic in design work. When you're done completely, hit enter to accept what you've made. And there it is. All right, go ahead and practice this on your own. All right, that concludes the lesson. We've covered 3D arrays, polar rectangular, and filleting and chamfering in 3D, both uh, by typing and by dynamic icons. So practice everything, and we'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to draw several examples, and there'll be more of a hands-on drawing exercises. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you.